especially this week after getting back from the pain? Uh, trying to get in great shape, keep running the floor hard, just trying to get ready for that opener. Um, trying to build chemistry with my teammates. Um, and just figure out what we're trying to do. That's all. Um, we got a great group of guys, great coaching staff. This, this time it's for building and just trying to put things together and figure out what, what kind of team we're trying to do. As part of that process, how do you evaluate where you guys are at with your three-point shooting? Um, today we made a lot of three. Like, um, I don't know the percentage, but we made a lot of threes today. Uh, it's just about generating good looks. If we generate good threes, I feel like uh, we'll make a lot. But if we shoot just coming down, chuck it up threes, bad threes, it won't be, do us no good. So it's not about just getting up a lot of getting up a lot of threes. It's about being quality, quality looks. What type of guy are you? Like, still building chemistry. Like, are you someone who's gonna go up and ask you questions? I figure out my teammates first. So the way I approach Brad might not be the same way I approach Cruz. Uh, the same way I approach Ruth will not be the same as I approach KP. We all have different personalities. Some guys might like to talk a lot. Some guys might not might not like to talk a lot. You might I might can yell at somebody, I might get them going. I might have to talk to this guy a little different. So I go off my per the personalities of my teammates and then I take it from there. Personnel here, how does this team become good defense? Wanting it. Defense is all about just a mentality. Um, going out there wanting to compete, not wanting your, your man to kick your ass, and not wanting that team to kick your ass. So we have to first take pride in individual defense, and then after that, you know, we have to be there helping one another. If someone does get beat, hey, I got your back. It's about trust, knowing what the hell we're doing, knowing what our principles are, and um, what coach wants us to go there. How did y'all build up the over the years? Um, just winning and becoming a better team. So once we got a little bit good, like the one year we have just became short of making the playoffs, yeah. we scored a lot of points that year. So we looked at each other and said, you know, what's holding us back? It was the defensive end. And once you're serious about winning, you're serious about winning, you'll make those steps, you know, to become better defensively because we knew. That, that was our next step to become, you know, a playoff team mm -hmm. and, a, and a serious contender. You're not going to win in this league if you can't get stopped. And that's just the bottom line. And it'll be the same thing here. If we're serious about winning, we'll take pride in our defense and you'll see the results. I'm not saying it'll be overnight, we'll be the best defensive in the, in the league, but you should be able to see it through. What kind of defender are you? Um, I'm just a defender. Like I said, I go out there and compete. I'm not the best defender in the world, but I'm at my best when I'm out there taking pride and wanting to win a game. When you want to win a game, you're going to do what you got to do. So whether it's my one-on-one -on -one containment, whether it's, you know, being in help, whether it's being in the, just being in the correct spot that I'm supposed to be in, I just try to do it at a high level. Uh, like I said, sometimes I'll make mistakes just like we all will, but just being dialed in and focused, and I think that'll, that'll take care of a lot of mistakes. Wes speaks very admiringly of you. Uh, especially to us. Do you feel the love from him and any kind of the respect from him from the from the get go? Um, for sure. For sure. Uh, me and Wes got history. You know how that is with anybody you have history with. And it was good history. Uh, <laughs> we were in Denver together and uh, we both started where we weren't a good team and you know we got to a Western Conference Finals together. I mean so it, it, it's, it's, not, it's going to be nothing but you know good memories. He was the head assistant coach. I was one of the, you know, best players on the team, counting on. So we had a lot of dialogue. We had a lot of good moments together. Um, tough conversations, you know, to get us to where we need to go. And he's always respecting my mindset and I always respect his. Sometimes, as you know, teams can win, but there's not that trust or that rapport between a player and a coach. Why does it work well between you and him? You know, what is it about the, the match? I think it's just community. Uh, he, he talks to me. He lets me know how he feels. Um, and he tells me what it is, whether I want to hear it or not. Uh, what's going to let me know exactly what he wants from me, what he wants me to do, how he feels about the team, how do I feel about the team. He answers my opinion. Um, and that just comes with, you know, being a veteran in this league and, like I said, having success and then having success with him. So he, he knows my drive. He knows I want to win more than anything. And he knows I'm going to compete at a high level. Wes talks a lot about um, how he wants to kind of build good habits day in day out. How has he been doing that so far? Just
just hopping on it. Just hopping on every day. Um, before practice and film. Just getting on us about certain things and letting us know if we want to be this team, we're going to have to do this. And he leaves it up to the players. That's what a good coach does. At the end of the day, he can't go out there and play. He can tell us what to do, tell us the game plan, but it's our job to execute. I asked Coach about the yeah, improvement since Devin has seen the spacing, the rebounding, the pushing the pace, how have you worked in those areas? Um, you know, just growing, maturing. I've uh, been in the league a long time. When I first made my mark in Denver, um, it was by scoring and, and things of that nature. So when you're a young player and you're scoring, you start thinking, hey, hey, hey I got to score every game, I got to score every game. Once we got better and we got other guys that can score too, I had to learn how to make an impact other ways. One night, it might not be my scoring, but I can play Nate. I can rebound. I can defend. So I think that was the the biggest change in my game from the beginning stages in Denver to now. I understand that I can affect the game in different ways. I don't have to just, you know, run behind the ball all the time. Just be patient. I'm learning how to pick my spots and learning that there's more to the game than just putting the ball in the basket. This year 11, uh, just to talk about the hard work you put in to get to this moment, and then uh, how you feeling after you left the training camp. That's what I try to tell the young players, man. Overnight success does not happen, right? Uh, this is summers of, of me putting work in before I ever got a name, before I ever got to a team and played in Portland, buried on the bench two and a half years in a row, and working like I'm an all-star because I believe. And that's what I tell kids, like, you gotta be putting in that work right now for your future. You get what I'm saying? Because if I'm not putting in that work, then when it's my time, I'm not gonna do nothing. Then boom, I'm out to leave. But it takes time. You have to be knowing, man, I'm, I'm working hard, I'm working hard. I'll see results later. But you gotta put that work in now. This comes from, I'm 11 years in, I'm 11 summer straight. I haven't let up, not one summer. I ain't, Go into my summer and say I'm not working as hard or taking the summer off. No, I'm approaching all of them the same until I'm done because I don't want to slow down. I don't want to, you know, go backwards. I want to see how far I can take this. And the only way you can do that is just keep putting in hard work. What is it with the training? Did your summer work get disrupted at all? Did you no, I didn't get disrupted. Did you able to get in the same place in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Same way. Does a person become a vet? Is it a number of years? Is it a mindset, a mentality? Is it... I think it's all that put in one. Mentality, obviously the experience, years of being in the league. I think those two mixed together, you know, make you a vet. Who are the people you turn to in your first few years in the league when you really started to learn from either them talking to you or you watching them and how they Oh man, Earl Watson. Uh, Jared Jeffries, um, Jameer Nelson was big for me. Um, I had a lot. I had a lot of good best. Um, uh, o Williams, Darrell Wright. Uh, I had some good best man. I was blessed with some good best. When Darrell was your best, so when did you meet Delon? I met Delon when he was in college. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Big guard, versatile, leads the chain. I knew that he'd be a pro. I was having a different role with Coach Malone's crazy ass. <laughs> I'm glad you know he's a little crazy. <laughs> That's my guy. Yeah, of course, of course. So, is it how different is it knowing that he's the guy now? He's the head coach now, as opposed to the top assistant. Um, it's just his show now. Yeah. Um, and he learned a lot from Coach Malone, obviously, as, as he should. Like, mm -hmm. Coach Malone is a very good coach, very successful coach. But now um, he gets to take what he learned from Coach Malone and all the other coaches he worked for, the good from it, the bad from it, and create his own style and his own system. And, um, you know, I think it'll work for him. He's a Kind of cerebral. Yep. You know. Yep. How does that? How does he sell that to players? Um, I, 
face of Rick Jr. is a good way of being in jail. Wes is a guy, he don't get real high, don't get too low. You know, he's like real even kill. And I think you have to be that way to be successful in the league, whether you're a coach or a player. Because it's, it's a roller coaster ride, man. You know that. You've been coming for a while. There's so many ups and downs in your career. But if you get too high, you get too low, it can throw you out. So you just have to see things for what it is to try to keep that. You know, even kill perspective. Hey, well, how's the the back doing? It's doing good. I've, I mean, I haven't missed nothing since that preseason game. Um, I played in the next preseason game. I've been practicing. I haven't took a day off, so I'm fine. You were talking about improvement, I guess, just from you know the LA mini camp to when you guys got here after Labor Day to now. Yeah. Where have you seen the defensive improvement? Uh, us just getting to know each other, getting to feel for each other. We got a lot of new guys. Um, so we're just trying to play with each other, figure out what guys like, what guys don't like, and trying to, you know, play off of each other and uh, just figure this thing out. And whether it's Wes talking to you or you just seeing the lineups in practice, I guess, do you expect to start come a couple weeks? I mean, I'm a guy I always expect to start. Um, that's just who I am. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to make the best out of it regardless. It's not going to change my mindset of I'm not starting, I ain't going to play hard or, you know, try to make an impact. It is what it is, but, I mean, obviously, you know, I want to start. I mean, who would? How, how would you evaluate your guys' three-point shooting so far? Um, if you've seen today, we in our scrimmage, I think both teams probably shot it. And like 60, I don't know if that's good or bad because we weren't playing no defense or what. But, <laughs> but I mean, we've been shooting the ball good. I mean, um, we trying to generate uh, better threes, um, paint threes. That's just just being aggressive downhill and making guys commit and getting getting off the ball and shoot rhythm threes. And just, it'll be contagious, you know. Um, I think uh, we got a lot of scoring, you know, ability with guys. Um, and I just think our biggest thing is if we buy in the defense and defense rebounding that's when we can show our talent on a break and run so that's kind of been our main focus um it's been good at times but it's been poor at times too so we're just trying to get that the median the, the line um to be solid at all times i know it's the nba and we playing against the best talent in the world so some nights you just won't have it uh, but we trying to have it as many nights as possible because the east is loaded and uh, the whole league is loaded Monte, after Johnny got the chance to um, play point guard a little yeah. bit over in Japan, did you were you in his ear at all? Were you just going through anything with him? Um, I I usually uh try to talk with guys after, because um, you know uh, everybody sees stuff different. You know, even with me having experience, um, if I'm on the sideline, you know somebody might see something differently on the court, and I've been there before where somebody would try to come up to me, but I'm like, I seen something differently out there. So, um, you know, my job, you know, going into year six, like Isaiah Todd, he stayed like right under me. I watched playing with him a lot just on, you know, he's a young kid, just didn't didn't do college. So um, my job for him is just like, yo, we need an energy guy. We need a three and D guy. Cause you know, at first, you know, being that young, he, had, he hasn't really found his position yet. So like now, today, I think he had like six or seven threes. You know, he just was playing defense, getting out in transition, rebounding, and making threes. You know, just my little say so with that. So with the Johnny situation, I let him. He got to go out there and learn first, and then we break it down. You know, my biggest thing I tell Johnny is to just play hard, and he just got to be more vocal because Johnny a laid back, quiet guy. You know, if you play the point in this league, you got to be vocal. All the good ones, like they looking at you. You know. Um, so if you do throw the ball, it was one play. I, I did talk to him in the timeout. I'm like, it's a late shot clock situation. Six on the shot clock. The ball get back to you, showtime, you know? Uh, you can't throw it to Vern even if he was open because that's not Vern's strength out there, you know? So that's on you. He shot it, but Vern shot it, but I mean, it's on you. It's just like same thing with me. So if I throw a grenade to somebody, it's on a point guard. and. Um, at that level, at that position, and where I know he can go with his talent, he got to hear stuff like that because I had to hear it and now I understand. It. So um, I, it's funny for me to be in this position, <laughs> kind of, you know, coaching now a little bit. Um, you used to be him? Yeah. You know, my my first year I came in, I was the fourth point guard on depth chart in Denver. 
my two way year, Jameer Nelson was my best. So um, it's, it feels good to see the tables kind of rotate. But, you know, I'm all ears. I was all ears, and uh, that's all I want these guys to be. That's all I want is success for them. What's it like getting to know your new teammates' shooting spots? Um, I mean, I got a natural feel for the game, so I played against these guys, so I kind of got a, you know, familiar uh, Larry, Larry with the, the the way they hoop. So, you know, like KP, pick and pop, is automatic. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Brad can get into his bag in between. Mid-range is automatic, three's good. Cool's the same way, and just like, my job is to try to make, um, just try to make the game easier for guys. And that's me just, you know, just being aggressive and also just being a quarterback out there. Cause I mean, being a point guard, you're the quarterback, just getting guys set up and just knowing time and score and things like that. So my job is pretty easy. I mean, all these guys can shoot. It's just all about me just trying to run the right things. Cause Wes gonna give me that freedom. You know, he's doing it here now where the team can go on a run and be like, Monte, what we in, you know, instead of, you know, back in Denver, Nicola might bring it up and cause some. Now it's more onus on me getting us into a set. Um, I think that'll be uh, my turning point. Um, I mean, I, I'm doing a good job at it, but it's still, I still got stages to grow with it, just getting back into that mode like I was in college where, all right, what we in, Ooh, you know, I got away from it for five years in Denver. I make our set up and tell guys the ATOs, but most of it was Nicola coming down, orchestrating the offense. So um, for me, it's a it's a new chapter in my life that I'm looking forward to. Um, and I just got to keep learning every day. And uh, I think if we keep going at this pace, keep I keep studying the playbook and everything, because it's similar sets from Denver, just different names. So that's kind of <laughs> confused me at times. But um, yeah, I just got to keep being a student of the game. At what point of your basketball life did you feel comfortable being vocal? What, what, was that something you always had? Yeah, I always had that. I mean, my mom hooped, so she played the point. So for me, she would like, I'd be playing a video game and she'd just pause it and come give me an interview just like this, like what's going on in the game? We're playing <laughs> well, we hoop. So I've always been comfortable being vocal. Um, that was like a big thing in the household. You know, so she would always, you know, get on me about like my emotions, keep them on the line, always trying to stay um, evil kill with this game and um, just keep a smile on my face and keep my composure. Because if you're the quarterback, you say, and point guard, people look at you when times get hard and you're facing adversity. So if they don't see me kind of emotions going up and down and I'm just kind of even kill, it'll help everybody out. So I've always been vocal. Like I said, in Denver, my five years, Last year, I was I was asked to be more vocal with Jamal out, having to speak up more. But like, I actually got away from that too, cause you know I was just you know great, a good role player, you know, and I wasn't trying to step on nobody's toes. So I would just come to work or say stuff here and there. And coach would always tell me that you know the locker room got your respect, you know they respect you. You could speak up, but I just didn't feel comfortable, you know. But like now here, um, I feel more comfortable, especially with Brad actually. Yo, speak up, Tay. Whatever you see, you know, you got experience. We need to hear that, you know, and just hearing that from a guy like Brad, you know, it does a lot for my confidence to, all right, it's all right for me to say something without people thinking I'm doing too much. So it feels good to kind of get back to that vocal leader, you know. What was the <laughs> format of the scrimmage? Is it like full four quarters, 12 minutes yeah, each? Yeah, today we blew it out four quarters, uh, 12 minutes. Uh, it was fun. Uh, we got blue team came out hot probably like 18 2 and then um you know the nba we got complacent they went on a run of theirs and made it a game and we ended up winning 124 122 or something like that so it was a good game great great scrimmage how'd they uh dole out lineups is it almost random or coaches yeah. come up with it players come up know. with it I, mean, I think right now we're just trying to figure out who our what's going to be starters or what's the format, things like that. Um, but just building that chemistry, you know, the season right around the corner. So um, I like where they're going with it. And I just like the competitiveness on both sides of the ball. Um, the white team easily could have folded um, and just let us have a field day and get whatever we want. But they manned up and turned it on. And um, that just showed we're not going to have that lay down mentality this year. And uh, we drilled that. And I just like the fact that 
when we was messing up the blue team, when we was when we would say something to Kuz, Kuz say something to Brad, and Brad say something to KP, or I missed a block out and I raised my hand first, like my bad. And everybody was like, yeah, grab that box out. To, it ain't personal, you know, it's not like, and I like that because I've been on teams where when you can uh, accept corrective criticism, that's when you're making steps, you know, because you, you're comfortable with getting on somebody. You're not holding your tongue and then game 77, you try to say something, but you've been letting it fly the whole year. You ain't going to be successful that way. So I like where we're going. Is that habits? Are those habits? Yeah, that's habits. And it's also just being comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. It may sound small, but like, yeah. Because I tell guys all the time, our goal is to win. Everybody want to get paid, get new contracts. If we all win, we all going to everybody eat. Everybody eat. And I think us, us guys, not just this team, but other guys in the league particularly, people fall into their egos so much. It fluctuates from the whole big picture. And uh, I just uh, I just feel like if we okay with taking, you know, corrective criticism and not getting down and not wanting to do something now because you three or four guys got on you, it's going to go around the table. Everybody going to mess up. <laughs> 82 games. Ain't nobody gonna have a perfect 82. <clears throat> Somebody gonna miss the same block out you missed next game. So um, it ain't no hard feelings, but you know, I'm trying to win. You know, I didn't come over here to have a mediocre season. Um, I don't plan to miss the playoffs. I've been there every year. So uh, that's a good feeling. So if we can keep this momentum and our, our stuff on the right track, I like where we're going. Monte, take me back to Japan for a second. Now that you got two games under your belt with Coach West, did it feel the same? You looked really comfortable there. How did, how did that feel? I mean, it felt comfortable. Um, like I said, uh, my biggest thing is just like, I just like, I know the playbook. Um, it's just like, for me, it's just like storing all of it. <laughs> so I was like, boom, boom. Because some of you call, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I need to get more. Boom, 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 you know? But that takes time though. Like for me, um, I can control that. That's just me going to study the playbook. It ain't like something I ain't got no control over. So I kind of panic when I ain't got control over something. But like, that's easy, fixable. Um, but Japan was fun. You know, I tried to be as comfortable as I can, but also learn the spots and learning where guys like to rock. But it's hard to judge in limited minutes. And also um, it's just two games, you know? and. Um, playing against a good team. I was glad we played against the defending champs just because, you know, it's a, it's a it's a measuring stick. You know what I'm saying? Didn't want no easy game where it's just going to be sloppy up and down, you know, right off the bat. You know, I matched up with Steph. I got to be locked in on chasing and things like that, you know, building building the bad habits that you had this summer because you ain't did nothing in three months <laughs> and going out there and guarding Steph. So, me, I'm all about competitiveness and, I'm glad we played that because now we kind of ahead of the stick, you know what I'm saying? Playing a team like that, whether they were rusty, whether we were rusty, still got it's still the Warriors. <laughs> they still gonna test your transition defense. They still gonna test if you your your half court defense, and also they gonna test your offense because they live for steals and getting out on the break. So I think we did a good job with that. And the last one for you, Coach said it's been really competitive and training yeah. camp. Just your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean. One thing about me, I'm gonna make it competitive because I like talking shit. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm gonna bring that tenacity and Brad talking and Kuz talk. So like, if you on the other side of the ball, you ain't got nothing to do but raise your plate because you ain't about to, like, I'm grown too, I ain't about to let them talk like this. <laughs> so, but it all come from a good place. Cause, you know, I was always taught your practices should be harder than your games. You know what I'm saying? So. If we competing, getting after it, diving on the floor, taking charges in the game, it should just be a, you know, it should be a casual. You know, it's going to be hard because it's a game. But practices, we should go in here harder than any other because at the end of the day, we know what we're running. Mm -hmm. It should be hard to score in practice. We know every play. You know what I'm saying? And then now we play against other teams. They don't know. They may know what we're running on film, but it's different when you're out there. Mm -hmm. So if we go hard like this, the game should be fine. And that's the habits I'm trying to bring over here from Denver. Like, our practices, bro, we bloody. Mm -hmm. Like, it was real wars in there, you know. And if we can do that, and I like how we was today. It was people diving on the floor, competitiveness, mad about missing box, box outs, and not just, all right, we'll get it back next possession. 
Nah, that ain't cool. Cause one or two possessions in this league, it'll cost you a game. You know what I mean? So I think we turned it on the right path, though, and uh, I like that. Yes, sir.